Hi, everybody. My name is Nathan Agin, and welcome to uh, the Working Actors Journey Rehearsal Room. Uh, this is a project that's been going on a few years now, which has been wonderful. Uh, it is an opportunity for uh, pr both professionals and newer artists to get together, collaborate, and work very deeply on one scene over the course of a month. Uh, it's uh, a luxury that uh, even in professional theater, uh, a lot of people do not get this kind of time. Uh, and yet it's uh, the kind of work that often draws people to this kind of work there's, because there's so much to mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, every one of our groups has never finished in week two. There's always more to explore. Uh, and so it's been um, it's been just a joy to watch this group work on the scene from measure for measure tonight. Uh, I will let them kind of, uh, you know, speak more about where we are in the play and what's going on. Um, but if you are totally new to what this is, I'll, I'll just give you a, you know, a couple quick um, items about it. Um, one of the things I love about this project is we get to explore different casting options, uh, whether we are being more conscious about gender or age or race than maybe some theaters uh, sometimes can be or feel like they can be. Uh, and through the magic of technology, we can bring artists together from all over the place. Uh, sometimes it's people that haven't, you know, worked together in 20 years and, and now they get to, you know, re-collaborate on something. Uh, and, you know, within our group tonight, you know, there are people spread all over the country. So it's, it's really wonderful that you're, you know, it's, it's a way to combine actors from different markets, different walks of life, different backgrounds and, and, and things like that, that, uh, you know, but they all get to come together and, and work on it. So, um, I, you know, the small pitch is if you like to be involved and, and get the replays of each of the weeks, um, you know, that starts at just $5 per month. You can support uh, this project and, you know, I'll send out emails of, of how you can get involved with that. Uh, and I'll thank uh, our current patrons, uh, Michelle, Christian, Jim, Magdalene, Ivar, Danielle, and Frank. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, and for next month, we are planning a scene from The Winter's Tale uh, with Jeffrey Wade directing. Uh, and you can sign up uh, to receive both video and audio replays. And those will typically be available on Thursdays. So uh, I think, I hope I've gone through all my notes that uh, that's enough for me. Uh, you came here to see all these great people do their work. So uh, I will turn it over to them. Uh, and you know they can all do just a very quick intro and then our dramaturg uh, uh, can give you a quick context of where we are in the play. So with that, I'll turn it over to our director, Stefan. And again, I just want to say thank you to all of the artists for, for being here and uh, you know having a great time with this. So, all right, I will, I will check in at the end. Ah, one more note for those who are here live. If you have questions, throw those in the chat. I will collect those and we can, you know, go through them at the end. Uh, or if you're feeling brave and you want to just come on video or on mic, we can do that too. So uh, now I think that's it for me and I will see you later. Thank you, Nathan. This has been amazing. Uh, what a, what a gift to just come and hang out with people I've never met before and nerd out on Shakespeare. So I'm Stefan Nowitzki and I am the director, um, Charlotte. Hello, everyone. Um, this is my third, third, third project with with Nathan. So thank you, Nathan. Uh, and um, I'm uh, coming to you from a uh, Philadelphia area. So thanks, everybody. This has been this has been wonderful. I don't think I have an Isabella in my career. I think I might have been a little long in the tooth. So it's very nice to visit her. <laughs> uh, 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 Rachel. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Delaplane. I'm a nomadic voice actor. So I'm usually, I've been calling into this rehearsal room from kind of all over the country over the past month, currently home in the Philadelphia area as well. And for this reading, I'm reading the roles of Provost and Lucio. And with that, I'll kick it over to Paul. Hi everyone, Paul Nicholas, uh, also based in Philadelphia. This is a really Philadelphia, a Philly-centric group um reading angelo and very excited to be here I, i'm a wannabe shakespeare nerd oh miranda, miranda. Oh, go ahead paul yeah 
Hi, friends. I'm Miranda Johnson Haddad. I'm the dramaturg for this production, and it's been uh, just an enormous amount of fun. It's my idea of a good time to get together with people and discuss Shakespeare. So I've really been in uh, in heaven during this project and during our calls. Uh, Stefan, shall I give a quick introduction to Measure for Measure at this point? Um, okay, so for those who need a refresher on the play, Measure for, for Measure was written in about 1604, so relatively late in Shakespeare's career. And our story so far uh, that, that brings us to Act Two, Scene Two, is that the Duke of Vienna has decided to step down because he has let the laws lapse and Vienna has become uh, a lawless place. Um, and he feels that it would be just too upsetting setting for, for the people of Vienna if he were the one to enforce these laws after a long, a long break. Some one character says 14 years, another says 19. It's been a long time. So he he uh, deputizes Angelo, uh, who is has been his his uh, right hand man. Uh, he deputizes Angelo to take over the, the ruling of Vienna and to enforce these laws. And Angelo is a very, very uh, virtuous man. One character s describes him as, as saying uh, his, his blood is very snow off. He's cold, he's rigid, he, he puts the rules into, into effect. And one of the first rules that he decides to enforce is the, the laws against adultery. And the first uh, young man whom he ensnares and has arrested and and who is to be executed is a young man named Claudio, who has impregnated his fiancee. And as Claudio is being hauled off to jail, he asks Lucio, his friend, to, um, to please go find Claudio's sister, Isabella, who is about to enter a nunnery. She's a very virtuous young woman. And to ask her to please go to Angelo and plead for her brother's life. Uh, Isabella agrees agrees to do so. And in Act 2, Scene 2, she is uh, being brought into the presence of Angelo to try to persuade him to allow her brother to live. So that's our story so far. Let's pick it up. So it's been a, a crazy rehearsal and sometimes we haven't had everyone. And so what's great is now we get to play with Charlotte and Paul after we've kind of done our text work. So I think what we should do y'all is let's just do one more work through stopping and starting. Yeah. And uh, we kind of really dug deep last rehearsal with Paul and Rachel. And so Charlotte, Take your, let's take our time as we go through. And if you have questions and like what the hell's going on here or whatever, right? Uh, with Miranda, she knows everything. So why don't we just work our way through and then we'll be able to, you know, that'll take us 45 minutes. And then we'll be able to do a couple reads where we're all, you know, have our motors running. Make sense? Okay, here we go. Oh, I'm a servant. I apologize. Every time. He's hearing a cause. He will come straight. I'll tell him of you. Pray you do. I'll know his pleasure. Maybe he will relent. Alas, he hath but as offended in a dream. All sex, all ages smack of this vice. And he to die for it? No, what's the matter, provost? Is it your will Claudio shall die tomorrow? Did not I tell thee yea? Hadst thou not order, why dost thou ask again? Lest I might be too rash. Under your good correction, I have seen when, after execution, judgment hath repented or his doom. Go to, let that be mine. Do you your office, or give up your place, and you shall well be spared. I crave your honor's pardon. What shall be done, sir, with the groaning Juliet? She's very near her hour. Dispose of her to some fitter, some more fitter place, and, and that with speed. Here is the sister of the man condemned, desires access to you. Hath he a sister? I, my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of a sisterhood, if not already. Well, let her be admitted. And see you, the fornicatress, be removed. Let her have needful but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. Save your honor. Stay a while. You're welcome. What's your will? I am a woeful suitor to your honor. Please, but your honor, hear me. Well, what's your suit? 
There is a vice that most I do abhor, and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I would not plead, but that I must. For which I must not plead, but that I am at war twixt will and will not. Well, the matter? I have a brother, is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault, and not my brother. Heaven give thee moving graces. Condemn the fault, and not the actor of it. Why, every fault's condemned, ere it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function, to find the faults whose fine stands in record, and let go by the actor. Just, but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Not or so. To him again, entreat him, kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You are too cold. If you should need a pin, you could not with more a tame a tongue desire it. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him. And neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not, I, that I cannot do. But might you do it, and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse, as mine is to him. It is too late. He's you are sentenced. Good. It is too late. Good hold. Too old. Good hold. All right. Wow, you guys are good. That was just like everything, all the little stuff we worked on. I'm like, hmm? this is awesome. Charlotte, welcome back. <laughs> you came in gunning. Um, <laughs> I only stopped there because I wanted to give us a chance uh, to go back. And we don't have to go back and do it. But do you have any questions um, or things, things you heard, things you want to point out before we dive into the meat, so to speak? Um, it's quite gorgeous. Anything? Anything in there? Yes, yes, Miranda, jump in. And this is something I should have mentioned at the beginning, just for those uh, those watching at home. Um, uh, Rachel, of course, is playing two separate characters here. The provost, who is a type of um, jailer uh, who is coming to Angelo, but also Lucio, who is who is Claudio's friend uh, and and who is is brought Isabella uh, literally on the threshold of entering the convent. He has brought her into Angelo and is 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 encouraging her not to give up so easily. So so whether he can be seen by Angelo or not, Isabella can hear him and he's her her cheering section. Nice work. To that end, do you think we could push Provost even more proper? Absolutely. And a part of me wants you to be more judgy. Okay. Which is terrible okay. directing, by the way. If my students said that, I would ding them half a point. Um, but I I just I want to see one, I want to push the two apart. But I'm curious about this just sort of it, it would almost put pressure on Angelo. If you're just even I don't know, you, you're more centered as a person and just see what ha happens like that. You still have to lower. You have to go below. Yes, sir. OK, whatever. But I don't know. It's in the room. Love um, it. Great. OK. Boy, Paul, I got everything we worked on, sir. See all that. See you, the fornicatress. Let her have. I love that trochee. See you. Right. It's so clearly no. I said make this happen. Make it happen. Right. That was beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. And we can tighten. We can tighten it up next time we come through it. Um, Isabella. Have you noticed um, there is a? Can we just pick it up from? Uh, I'm I'm a woeful suitor to your honor, and I love how careful you are with your initial I am. And normally I don't hear it, but you are so wonderful with it. I am. It's great. Um, I think it's a. She has kind of word salad on. There is a vice that most I do abhor, and most desire should meet the blow. I think you're allowed to lean into the. 
not quite knowing it's all monosyllabic not quite knowing it you know and i don't know if it's pre-planned or if it's even hard for you to even explain right yeah dancing around the the words of his crime essentially yeah yeah ugh, yeah right mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. how do i i don't even talk how do i it's okay to leave to it's okay to lower yeah play with it okay um and then lucio it's okay to add sexy body stuff okay. on give come on right and you could just let it loosen it up and just god where's your the juice woman let's go get in there right right um and i don't you know we haven't really talked y'all about what is going on for each of them and that's kind of what our goal would be today right we spent a lot of time on just literally scansion in a sense and meaning but who are they as people would maybe be something we could talk about a little bit you know what it what is it like for isabella i don't know if you've considered entering a convent recently but um i mean i think somebody who who is con who is considering that life i think the closest thing I could come to is is the discipline one has to have to be in, say, this profession, right? Mm -hmm. And the 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 drive and the uh, that's the only thing is that yeah, I can't contemplate that life, but I can contemplate the the characteristics that you would have to have to do it. Um, and m maybe not always knowing all the reasons, because but like we've talked about how Isabella is a little, probably not the best candidate for this life. <laughs> right, right now, right. Um, Good. Yeah. I, there's a great book I read somewhere, I don't know, about artists and arts. It says, um, only artists and monks have the same focus. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I've said to young students, I was like, it's a calling. Because no one would choose this life. Who the hell would choose this life? Oh, you want to be poor and rejected all your life? Great, you go there. But um, so it is a it is a calling. At least it, it felt that way to me, and and that I could do a lot of things. But this is the only thing I want to do, and I'm willing to give up a lot to do it. So I feel like that is where she is, uh, or at least that's that's the fabric from which she works. So. It, why is it hard for her to ask the Duke, ask Angela for this? Because, you know, inside and out, she's wearing the robes of someone who should be on his side, who should absolutely agree with him. Um, Great. Yeah. And so it's, it's a, it's a sticky wicket. Yeah. Yeah. That's helpful, right? Uh, I'm trying to think when the last time I had to go ask someone. I don't know. I guess if I've ever had to advocate for a student that was against every rule we have in the department, you know, and we had this one, we had this one student, this is all being recorded. I shouldn't tell you this, but, and the faculty were like, why are we let, giving this one student a pass? And I was like, because they're going to be rich and they're going to donate it there. You don't understand these people. <laughs> rules do not apply to this type of person. But I know it's awkward, right? Mm -hmm. So I think you're absolutely right. And wow, it never occurred to me how similar, therefore, you are to Angela. Mm -hmm. And then I guess, Angela, we should unpack why why you say stay to the uh, to the provost. To the provost? You don't want to be alone with her? Yeah. You know what I found in this play? It, it, there are a lot of complicated, um, potentially confusing things in this whole play, especially this scene and the next scene. And I have found that sometimes what helps me is that the, the simplest answer is, is the most useful. And it might just be that simple, that she walks in and he says, maybe out of um, a question of decorum or policy, or maybe 
because she immediately arouses him that he says, wait, you guy who I just told to get out of here and go do your job, don't leave just yet. It could be a protocol thing. Like, I'm not supposed to be alone with a woman, but I don't think that's what it is. Miranda, you're nodding. Do you have any insight? I don't think it's a Mike Pence thing. <laughs> right. That's the that's what we were talking about uh, last week, I think. You know, why 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 is that? And, and so really, I'd bounce it back to Paul. So is it, it he's concerned with with not even having the appearance of of impropriety or or does he want a witness? Um, because it is remarkably contradictory of what he just said three seconds ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he says it on sight of her. And yeah. it's not that he doesn't know that she's a woman. He said to the servant, she has a sister. And the servant mm -hmm. says, yeah, she has a sister. And I say, okay, fine. I'll let her come in. And we had said last week that probably he knows he sort of has to, that the that next of kin or family members are given the right to appeal. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say, yes, let her in, even mm -hmm. though I'm not going to relinquish um, my position. Mm -hmm. But then she walks in and he says, wait, don't go yet. I mean, the other thing, which I don't think it is, the other thing it's, that's possible is, I want you to stick around. Let me show you what true power is. Stick around. Let me mm. show you how you handle people who are begging for people's life. This is what you need to learn, Mr. Provost. Mm. I don't think that what it is. that's what it is. But me just saying that out loud might, may have convinced me a little bit that that might be. Might it be, and this just occurred to me, I've been teaching this play for more decades than I care to admit, this just occurred to me, might he be, you know, he knows she's shortly to enter a sisterhood because the provost has told him so, might he be avoiding the, the even the appearance of impropriety for her? Might it be a way of, I don't know, just acknowledging her virtue which is starting to be in his head from the beginning. I don't know, but that just occurred to me. As okay, if we if that was if that's a possibility, knowing what we all know about how Shakespeare writes, wouldn't he say that earlier when the servant said she's about to enter a convent? Wouldn't he say that then? When yes. he says to the provost, "Go now, go do it," and then he says, "Don't go yet." Yes. Yes, absolutely. I think so. So is it something about her very appearance? That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just just it's he's how he directs it. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, like, this is the courtroom, right? Or the little chambers. He's like, go do this. She and Lucia walk in. And there's there either there's beats missing or not. Maybe it's a shared line. There should be order for it. Save your honor. Or there should be order for it. She walks in and there's a weird moment. Save your honor. Stay. Even if Lucio and uh, and Isabella are just walking in, they're not giving focus to him. But there's a moment where they enter and he looks at them and he changes. Yeah. And I think we should not forget she's wearing the, the habit of a novice. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my son. So we have lots, I have lots of friends who are priests, right? I teach at Catholic school and my teenage son was like, I don't like it when they're around. I go, why? He goes, I don't know. You know, because he's because he's, he's afraid he has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I don't don't neglect the power of the habit. Um, just let that be the event. And I don't know how much he's been around. But they walk in. And it's like, OK, I don't know what this is. Right. Stay. It doesn't have to be sexual. It doesn't be, at the very least, it's just that's different. Stay. You know, just because I like it's a bad habit. It annoys people, but I like to explore every possibility. Mm -hmm. Could could Lucio's presence be contributing to why he tells the provost to stay? Because she walks in with what appears to be an advocate of sorts. Is, is that a possible reason he tells the provost to stay? And we are here sitting thinking that it's Isabella and maybe it's Lucio. And I'm also not I, throwing, I, 
I'm not throwing in the trap in the trash the theory that he's telling him to stay so he can show off what a power how a powerful man handles an appeal. How yeah, I said it right. Well, we talked think... to you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go. Well, we talked some last time about um, whether or not Lucio is even really seen or heard by anybody other than Isabella in this. So I'm happy to play it either way in that Lucio is the light, as we've talked about before, just like going wherever he wants and uh, just very existence and presence walking into this space is a challenge. Plus, like, oh, look who I brought. Versus, um, the like she's gonna go in there and I'm gonna be the little Jiminy Cricket in her ear and I know what card I'm playing in here and I know it's more powerful if I'm not there so whichever way you want to play it and which uh, possibilities we want to explore I'm all here for it I or think not. what I'd like to try once is on good old stupid Stanislavski just literally what is Angelo's objective to get this meeting over with as quickly as possible, right? And what is her objective? To get out her her pitch, all right? But there's something about her that, that ju- it has to cost him something to have her in the room. And 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 I don't know if you want to put in the, the guilt of you have your own girl that you should be engaged to whatever it is the room is harder it, it, it is my the best direction i ever give is this it's got to cost angelo something to even be dismissive of her right so that we know the audience knows oh this is this is interesting okay and so let's just see when does it start to cost him more why don't we just take it from see see you the fornicatress removed? Ah, how we go back to here is the sister of the man condemned. Let's let Angelo's day just get worse, right? He's trying to do things. He's trying to run things. Okay, and so everyone get in that headspace, and let's just see what happens if we if we let it fly this time. Forgive me, Stefan. I might overplay this a little bit just to see what it feels like. Oh, let's go for it. Here is the sister of the man condemned, desires access to you. Hathia's sister. I, my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of a sisterhood, if not already. Well, let her be admitted. See you the fornicatress be removed. Let her have needful, but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. Save your honor. Stay a little while. You're welcome. What's your will? I am a woeful suitor to your honor. Please, but your honor, hear me. Well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I would not plead, but that I must, for which I must not plead, but that I am at war twixt will and will not. Well, the matter? I have a brother is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Heaven give thee moving graces. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it? Why every fault's condemned, dare it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the faults whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Oh, just, but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. But not or so. To him again, entreat him. Kneel down before him. Hang upon his gown. You are too cold. If you should need a tan, you could not with more came a tongue desire it. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. 
but might you do it and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him. He's sentenced. Tis too late. You are too cold. Too late? Why, no. I that do speak a word may call it back again. Well, believe this. No ceremony that to great ones longs, not the king's crown, nor the deputed sword, the, the marshal's truncheon, nor the judge's robe, become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If he had been as you, and you as he, you would have slipped like him, but he, like you, would not have been so stern. Pray you be gone. I would to heaven I had your potency, and you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? No. I would tell what twere to be a judge and what a prisoner. I touch him, there's the vein. Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you would waste your words. Alas, alas! Why, all the souls that were, were forfeit once, and he that might the advantage best have took found out the remedy. How would you be if he, which is the top of judgment, should but judge you as you are? Oh, think on that, and mercy then will breathe within your lips like, like man new made. Be you content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemn your brother. Were he my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, that's sudden. Spare him, Sp spare him. He he's, he's not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens, we kill the fowl of season. Shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves? Good. Good, my lord, bethink you. Who is it that hath died for this offense? There's many have committed it. Well, I well said. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slept. Those many had not dared to do that evil if the first that did the edict infringe had answered for his deed. Now tis awake, takes note of what is done, and like a prophet looks in a glass that shows what future evils either now or by remissness new conceived and so in progress to be hatched and born, are now to have no successive degrees, but ere they live, to end. Yet show some pity. I show it most of all when I show justice, for then I pity those I do not know which a dismissed offense would after gall, and do him right that answering one foul wrong, lives not to act another. Be satisfied. Your brother dies tomorrow. Be content. So you must be the first that gives this sentence, and he that suffers. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant's strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. That's well said. Could great men thunder as Jove himself does, Jove would never be quiet, for every pelting petty officer would use his heaven for thunder. Nothing but thunder. Merciful heaven, thou rather with thy sharp and sulfurous bolt splits the unwedgeable and gnarled oak than the soft myrtle. But man, proud man, dressed in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured, his glassy essence, like an angry ape, plays such fantastic tricks before high heaven as makes the angels weep, who with our spleens would all themselves laugh mortal. Oh, to him, to him, wench. He will relent. He's coming, I perceive it. Pray heaven she win him. We cannot weigh our brother with ourself. Great men may jest with saints, tis wit in them, but in the less foul profanation. Thou art in the right, girl, more of that. That in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldier is flat blasphemy. Aren't advised of that? More on. 
Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it err like others, hath yet a kind of medicine in itself that skins the vice o'er the top. Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks, and tis such sense that my sense breeds with it. Fare you well. Gentle, my lord, turn back. I will bethink me. Come again tomorrow. Tark, how I'll bribe you. Good, my lord, turn back. How? Bribe me? Aye, with such gifts that heaven shall share with you. You had marred all else. Not with fond sickles of the tested gold, or, or stones whose rate are either rich or poor, as fancy values them, but with true prayers that shall be up at heaven and enter there ere sunrise, the prayers from preserved souls, from fasting maids whose minds are delicate, do nothing temporal. Well, come to me tomorrow. Go to, tis well, away. Heaven keep, your honor safe. Amen, for I am that way going to temptation where prayers cross. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? At any time for noon. Save, your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. What's this? What's this? Is this her fault or mine? The tempter or the tempted? Who sins most? Huh? Not she, nor doth she tempt. But it is I that, lying by the violet in the sun, do as the carrion does, not as the flower, corrupt with virtuous season. Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than woman's lightness? Having waste ground enough, shall we desire to raise the sanctuary and pitch our evils there? Oh, fly, fly, fly. What dost thou, or what art thou, Angelo? Dost thou desire her foully for those things that make her good? Oh, let her brother live. Thieves for their robbery have authority when judges steal themselves. What, do I love her that I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What is thy dream on? Oh, cunning enemy that to catch a saint with saints does bait thy hook. Most dangerous is that temptation that doth goad us on to sin in loving virtue. Never could the strumpet with all her double vigor, art and nature once stir my temper, but this virtuous maid subdues me quite. Ever till now, when men were fond, I smiled and wondered how. I thought we were just stop and start, but apparently we're not. Miranda's very pleased with our work. Well, you have uh, your, nice. your foot's on the brake pedal, sir. I know. I didn't want to stop it. You guys were going. You guys have worked. This is just. Um, I work with some of the greatest undergraduates. I'm very lucky, but professionals there is no substitute so thank you guys so much um okay um where to start god this thing goes on forever let's be honest we kind of should make sure we know the shape right because there's this preamble uh, you know you are too cold right and then it's uh, here's uh let me how do I how do I phrase this Charlotte I want to explore something with her which I discovered a color that you were playing at the very end when you were talking about the maids that kind of pretty 
vision of the world that I want that I there's let the naivete in that's that's the naivete that's what she thinks the convent is right mm -hmm. can we let that in at the beginning a little bit yeah mm -hmm. um so that the, he the 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 wonderful heaviness can come out later and then I think the shift, I want to know when it becomes personal to, between the two of you, right? Um, you were too cold, too late. Uh, pray you be gone, right? Maybe it's on I would have and I had your potency and you were Isabel. Like when does it, when did she cross a, a wee line? Is it there? It's somewhere in there. It, it... Oh, oh, shit. It's in the text. You see it? It's three lines earlier. He, If he had been as you. Yes, right there. Right. So she, she, that's, that's the next gear. That's when she shifts. There's, yeah. there's beats you notice, missing. You notice, Stefan, she takes a big beat after the mercy argument before she gets into it. Yeah, and then she brings in the word, you know, you. You, right. Right. Um, and I don't know if that comes out of, I hate Angela right now, or I'm just desperate. In a second, we're going to get to, I hate Angela, okay? Like, you barely know him, but there's just something, There's a. there's got to be a chemistry between the two of you, or else his final monologue doesn't make sense, right? And I'm trying to find that chemistry. And it's brain. So I think if he had been as you, from there, it's obviously a new idea. And I just wonder if it's it's uh, sparkling intellect is starting to kick in here. Actually, it probably kicks on in on tomorrow. Because now each of you gets so it's right. It gets a little bit more uh, even. Mm -hmm. Right. And I just want to hear once, I want to hear a read once where you guys get personal, where it's not heavy. It's not heaven and hell, but it's more like, I don't know, political arguments the wrong term, very wrong. But it's an argument between two people who just can't help freaking arguing with each other. And maybe that's me in academia, but it's just kind of like, no, I'm, I, mm, I just want to be right. It's no longer about my brother. I just want to be right. You know, and then because then I think the rhythms will be crisper. Yeah. Right, okay. it'll be driven. Gah, 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 gah. So that then, when he, right, because when he gets down to, I show it most of all when I show justice. You idiot, right? It, Which it's is okay to you should understand, Miss Isabella. Yeah, yeah. I just want to see. I want to hear the gloves come off. She's no longer a pious nun. She's no longer right. She's no longer a novice. She's it's just two people arguing on the subway. I heard two people argue in line at Costco about COVID last Saturday. And it was the most scary thing. They were kind of yelling. These were perfect strangers yelling at each other about number of deaths. And then this, as they were like having their car, their um, receipts checked. I just, I just want you guys to remember when's the last time you got into an argument with a random stranger. It happens all the time in academia, like, but you know what I mean? So there's a different vibe there. So let's go back a, a little bit because by the time you guys get to could, could great men thunder as Job does, you're just, those are body blows, right? And what I don't know is, is she angry? Or is she, I mean, is she pleading with him? Job, right? Or she just think he's just an asshole. I I think I think in her mind it's like white hot righteous laser. There's there's that that's like oh that's the that's the then let's put it in stark relief for you. This is what this means. That's Great. the pride that somebody would say who puts themselves in that position. Great. Then I also want to hear that even though it's righteous, it's petty. Hmm. As okay. in, righteous is like, I'm going to save your soul. Petty is you're fucking wrong, and I'm right theologically. 
Great. Okay. Okay. Did you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's because then we can get the righteousness back at the end. Mm -hmm. in, a sense, in a sense, she comes in false righteous. She comes in righteous. And then we get into this petty weird thing that gets his juices going. Because you're actually talking to him like a person. I think that for Angela, it's like, wow, my, I've met my match. And if she's just, not just, but if she's, if she's righteous, it doesn't move him. Right. It's, 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 it's gotta be that. Mm -hmm. I told you guys about my friend from grad school. We, we just hated each other because we we're both from Texas. And she would just go, well, what are you doing today? And I'd be like, fuck off. Like it was just something. It was oil and water. Okay. Let's go back. Now that I've thrown that in there, let's just see what happens. I, I, Paul, my, my only thing is um, see the fornicatress be removed. Yeah. It's okay to crush him, her, provost. Oh, harder. Harder, yeah. Okay. I think so. So so to give yourself the 180. Okay, now stay. Did we decide on what the 180, what's motivating the 180? Did we pick one? Um, I'd like to try it once, just once, that she walks in the room and you were like, I don't know what to do with that. It's it's like meeting a star. It's like meeting some someone, uh, just someone who takes your breath away, and not from a like, oh, you're beautiful, but from a, what is that? I, the first time I taught acting in uh, at UCSD, there was a generic bunch of beautiful students from Southern California, and then there was one guy from Cyprus, and this Cypriot. 20 year old was the most beautiful human you'd ever seen and he had beautiful hair and he just sat there and everyone couldn't breathe around him like it's just otherness is what i want to see and in a sense it's otherness so it's like and stay you a while hmm hold on hold on and maybe it's stay you a while for, for, as for reinforcements just be in the room. Okay. I want to just throw one more thing out there. It's sort of a question. Sure. Do, do I ever say that she is a good looking? I don't think I Looks ever have nothing to do with it. Right. I say she's virtuous. Yep. Okay. Have you ever met? I don't know if you have, you might not, but um, we have a lot of uh, Nashville Dominicans on campus and they're, they wear the full habit, like the full, like, mm -hmm. They don't have the wink, but it is. This is all you, right? And they're just, it's, they're just um, entrancing. And whenever I can, I can have lunch with them, I do, because they're the funniest people you've ever met. And one time I, we were eating, literally in the cafeteria, right? Students everywhere. This strange, almost homeless person came over and started talking to them like they knew. Like this woman knew the three nuns and they were so polite and this, let this crazy woman talk for like 20 minutes. And we, fi I finally had to go, I lied to nuns. Sister, don't you have to go teach? And she goes, I do. And we got out and we're leaving. And then we were all being really silent. And I was finally like, that was weird. And they go, happens every day. Come to Walmart with us. And I was like, I would never. They go, it's just play the weirdness of it okay. and just see what happens. Okay. So we're going to go back because you guys are really good and you guys can do these runs. I had this, like you guys are just normally I, I, I try to fix a scene um, with one note. I try to tweak the beginning and see what happens all the way through. So um, to that end, just try to find that thing you want to change in the other person. Okay, and listen for it. All right, here we go. Here is um, the sister. Sorry. sorry, go ahead. Here is the sister of the man condemned desires access to you. Hathia's sister. Mm. Sorry, friends, I lost my spot. Go again, Stefan. Uh, Rachel was in a different place. Here is a sister. Of the man condemned desires access to you. Hath he a sister? I, my good lord, a very virtuous maid, and to be shortly of a sisterhood, if not well, already. Well, let her be admitted. See you, the fornicatress, be removed. 
Let her have needful, but not lavish means. There shall be order for it. Save your honor. Say a little while. You're welcome. What's your will? I am a woeful suitor to your honor. Please, but your honor, hear me. Well, what's your suit? There is a vice that most I do abhor and most desire should meet the blow of justice, for which I would not plead, but that I must, for which I must not plead, but that I am at war twixt will and will not. Well, the matter? I have a brother is condemned to die. I do beseech you, let it be his fault and not my brother. Heaven give thee moving graces. Condemn the fault and not the actor of it. Why every fault's condemned, there it be done. Mine were the very cipher of a function to find the faults whose fine stands in record and let go by the actor. Oh, just but severe law. I had a brother then. Heaven keep your honor. Not or so. Do him again, entreat him, kneel down before him, hang upon his gown. You are too cold. If you should need a pin, you could not with more tame a tongue desire it. Do him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him. And neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not do, that I cannot. What I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him. He's sentenced. Tis too late. Good hold. Oh my God, it's going so well. Stay in it, y'all. We just take it back from um, must he needs die and Isabella. It's a um it's just like a student arguing with me on why we have to have this quiz today. It is petty, <laughs> it is quick, right? But do you really have to? It's like she was holy and now it's Okay. Okay, but right. really must see these it's a question, right? Um uh you could not with more tame and tongue desire it. Thank you, Lucio. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Cool to do. If you should need a pin, you could not with more tame a tongue desire it. To him, I say. Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him. He's sentenced. Tis too late. You are too cold. Too late. Why, no. I that do speak a word may call it back again. Well believe this. No ceremony that to great ones longs, not the king's crown or the deputed sword, the, the marshal's truncheon or the judge's robe, become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If if he had been as you, and you as he, you would have slipped like him. But he, like you, would not have been so stern. Pray you be gone. I would to heaven I had your potency. And you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? No. I would tell what twere to be a judge, and what a prisoner. I touch him, there's the vein. Your brother hold. is a... Good, good, fucking good. Hold you, mother. I know, <laughs> fucking hell, this guy. Um, so nice, guys. Must he needs die? Did you feel that shift? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and I could feel Paul just getting annoyed as fuck with you. Right, and it's in the text. You, it's it's a stick of mythy, right? It's just line, 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 line. Right. What? It's exasperating. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. The reason I stopped is that I thought it was so lovely, the, the confusion on too late that you were playing. 
I'm just, what the fuck? Too late. Yeah, you, what? If you can control this, then you can control time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but it's, it's, it's cold, right? It's still cold. It's a confusion. Mm. It actually makes me feel for you, but it's not suffering on the sleeve. It's just trying to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And then I want to encourage you to take even longer. On the, as mercy Find does. Your yeah. Yeah. After as mercy does. Mm -hmm. Let the stupid light bulb go on. You know what, asshole? Because look, look, you guys, the scene should end on after pray you be gone. Right? If you think about it, right? She's, you guys have argued over law. No, 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 no. He's tomorrow. Oh, what? And then finally, you know what? If he had been like you, you would have done it, right? And he's like, get the hell out of my office. Pray you be gone. And I would probably have you take two steps and then think the scene's going to be over with, with these next four lines, right? I wish, I wish I had your freaking, you know, majesty and shit because you're just an asshole. Um, right? And somehow, something right there, Angelo just has, he has to come back. He, he has to engage you. He had, he did not have to. And probably if we had time, we would have blocking, right? I don't know. He'd be moving papers and then he'd be like, excuse me? And that prompts, I touch him. There's the vein. So let's go back a little bit. Um, um, right, we, we know we're on really good solid ground and it's really fun to play. Must he needs die? Made no remedy. By the way, Stefan, I'm glad you said what you said because to me, the scene ends several times. Each time I lay down my position, the scene's over and I can go back to work and she should be leaving. And yet she's not. It's funny, actually, that you picked that moment to say that's where like the scene should end. Because for the past couple of times going through it, uh, Paul's reactivity of the like "pray you be gone" feels very um, fly swatty, and uh, playing the like spectator with the popcorn, trying to coach Isabella through it. I've been hinging on that line, being kind of like, "Ooh, you're getting to him now." Like they don't yell until they care, so. It's fun to play with this other perspective of it. I can play that differently, Stefan. Mm -mm. No, I think, but I think you are let to let the exasperation out. I will, I will debate with students, right? I'll get exasperated with them, but I don't think I'll ever, I don't think I've ever said, get the fuck out of my office. But you are like, ow, pray you be good on. Try to end the scene and see what happens. Okay. Wait, okay. Is it okay that I try to end the scene? With maiden no remedy and what I will not I cannot do and absolutely late sentence I try to end the scene several times, several times, several times. You know I'm I'm um, I wrote this note I, I didn't want to give you but I think I will anyway. I part of me thinks you you might be right about keeping this provost in the room to show him this is what it means to to rule, and here's my reason. Um. Condemn the fault and not the actor, but why every fault's condemned, ere it be done. He earlier had said, you know what? Are you sure about this? And you get four solid lines that are, you just know are right, right? And I think, I think it's kind of a cool raising of your own status. Like here, let me, let me, let me give you, let me preside from the judge's bench. Ready? Boom. And let you know, and you can revel in that, and 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 it'll give you something even bigger to fall. Okay, must he needs die? Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, I do think that you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him. He's sentenced. It's too late. Take that again. Take all that again. And I only, I only want to hear the logic. Might, might, can, can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to catch each other. Right? Must he needs die? Must he needs die? Maiden, no remedy. Yes, 
I do think that you might pardon him, and neither heaven nor man grieve at the mercy. I will not do it. But can you, if you would? Look, what I will not, that I cannot do. But might you do it, and do the world no wrong? If so, your heart were touched with that remorse as mine is to him? He's sentenced. Tis too late. You are too cold. Too late? Why, no. I that do speak a word may call it back again. Well believe this. No ceremony that to great ones longs, not the king's crown, nor the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon, or the judge's robe, become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. If he had been as you, and you as he, you would have slipped like him, but he, like you, would not have been so stern. Pray you, be gone. I would to heaven I had your potency, and you were Isabel. Should it then be thus? No. I would tell what twere to be a judge and what a prisoner. I touch him. There's the vein. Your brother is a forfeit of the law, and you but waste your words. Yes. Alas! Why, all the souls that were were forfeit once, and he that might the vantage best have took found out the remedy. How would you be if he, which is the top of judgment, should, be, should but judge you as you are? Oh, think on that. And mercy then will breathe within your lips like man new made. Be you content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemn your brother. Were he my kinsman, my brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, sudden? S spare him, spare him. He's not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens, we kill the fowl of season. Shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves? Good, good, my lord, bethink you. Who is it that hath died for this offense? Oh, there's many that have committed it. Aye, well said. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slept. Those many had not dared do that evil if the first that did the edict infringe had answered for his deed. Now tis awake, takes note of what is done, and, like a prophet, looks in a glass that shows what future evils, either now or by remissness new conceived, and so in progress to be hatched and born, are now to have no successive degrees, but ere they live, to end. Yet show some pity. I show it most of all you. All right. I'm going to get I'm, even further. I'm glad you guys are in the same room. I'm like, you know, Rachel, thank goodness you're between their little Zoom boxes. Woo! <laughs> Bloodshed. <laughs> it was, it's so glorious. Um, but I want to just keep just clarifying. It was listening to you guys. Uh, I will not do it. Look what I will not, that I cannot, that I might do it. That tells the audience, right? Ooh, those two can go. Right. Just that little five line wit battle is, is sort of like, ooh, wow. OK. OK. And we're connected. And I loved the pain and scaredness on tomorrow. Oh, that's sudden. Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. I skipped way, way before. Um. The beat you took before, if he had been as you, that is the beat we needed. Did you feel that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It just gave you, it gave you a chance to have a full run at a new, new thought. Right. Um, I realize we're not doing this on our feet with blocking and stuff, but I would be asking you, how would I fill that beat? I mean, it's very, very easy for me to just go back to my work at my desk. But it's weird that I don't respond to that argument about mercy. It's weird because I respond to everything else and I don't respond to that. And then when she says, you know, let's make this personal. What if it was you? Then I go, 
get out of my office. So um, I just think it's weird that I don't respond to the mercy. Thing. I'm not, and I'm not I saying think, that. I mean, obviously Shakespeare did that intentionally, but. I think it, it, it has to, it has to do with, with, she gives you something to think about. First of all, there's, I think there's two reasons. One, she gives you something to think about. She says, well, believe this, no ceremony that has great ones long to the king's crown, no the, the, the deputed sword, the marshal's truncheon, no the judge's robe. You could build those, by the way. No the judge's robe. Become them with one half so good a grace as mercy does. That's something he's like, well, wait a minute, because we I, I have a sense that Angela might be vain in a sense. And so what, right, it's a Portia speech. But one, I think you have to just Think about and Shakespeare leaves the new information. He is half a line. That's one of the reasons you don't speak is she gets to her point in the last three words as mercy does. So then, Paul, I think he's like, well, let me think about that. Two, I think you know I, if I talk, she'll talk more. Like in a sense, it's like maybe she'll run out of steam. I don't know, but the very least, it's just like stay in it with her, but don't engage yet. And maybe ah, ooh. She goes to the next place because you don't say anything. Maybe, yeah. Because I realize right? now that I have tried everything. I said, there is no remedy to the law. I said, I will not do it. If I will not do it, I cannot do it. And then I just, I go to a cop out. I, I make it not about me. Hey, look, he's sentenced. I can't change that. And she still continues. So maybe I've run out of, of arrows to shoot. And so I say, okay, yeah, then just she get out of here. Just go. Just get out of here. Right? Yeah. She brings mercy in. And then she gets personal. She downshifts to this new place. You know what? If he had been in just you and you, right, that would have happened. All right, we're done. I'm done. Which means that, Charlotte, I want you to be petty on I would to heaven. I had your potency. You know what, asshole? You can think that. Because it's, you think it's your last line. Uh, I on him, right? Your brother's a four for the law and you but waste your words. You freaking, we are done talking, right? And then uh, why all those souls that were forfeit once? This is a hard note to give, except I think she is, I want to say younger, but they're all younger than us because we're all not young anymore. But I think she has a naivete how old is she? 16? No. It's not that so, young, she. he ain't that old. 20? She's an undergrad. Yeah. Put it this way. Yeah. yeah. If that, right? And so yeah. every now and then those words can't come from a place of wisdom, but from something you learned. But wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I read once in the Bible. All the souls that were, and you should do this. I'm not saying naive. It's just, it's that kind of leaves room for her to discover. What? Younger than me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have no idea how old anyone is. So <laughs> I ain't 20. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. The significance of her being a teenager too falls right within like I know there's disparity about how long the rule has been so lax and the town has been such a sex pot, but that introduces the idea that the the city's always been this way. And so any sense of a utopia or pleasant, fair, just place is entirely storybook to Isabel. Right. Sorry, storybook. So tomorrow of oh, that sudden, let's just pick it up from right here. Why do we think Angelo now needs 10 lines? Because you've just said, I love it. Were he my kinsman? It must be us. He must die tomorrow. I, does he take offense? What's the new color from Isabella maybe here that gets him? Well, she's saying basically that we should circumvent 
the law because so many people have done it and not been killed for it. And I'm saying, no. The people have been circumventing the law for however many years, but not anymore. There's a new sheriff in town and the law will be in force. I love that. Can we just take it up, pick it up from just before this and let me hear that debate? Yeah. How about from be you be you content, fair maid line one hundred five. Oh, sorry, I was scanning. I was doing scansion. Um, be you content, fair maid. It is the law, not I, condemn your brother. Were he my kinsman, brother, or my son, it should be thus with him. He must die tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, that's sudden. Spare him. Spare him. He's not prepared for death. Even for our kitchens, we kill the fowl of season. Shall we serve heaven with less respect than we do minister to our gross selves? Good, good, my lord, bethink you. Who is it that hath died for this offense? There's many have committed it. Aye, well said. The law hath not been dead, though it hath slept. Those many had not dared do that evil if the first that did the edict infringe had answered for his deed. Now tis awake and takes note. Now tis awake, takes note of what is done, and like a prophet, looks in a glass that shows what future evils, either now or by remissness new conceived, and so in progress to be hatched and born, are now to have no successive degrees. But ere they live, to end. And show some pity. I show it most of all when I show justice. For then I pity those I do not know, which a dismissed offense would after gall. And do him right that answering one foul wrong lives not to act another. And be satisfied. If your brother dies tomorrow, be content. So you must be the first that gives this sentence and he that suffers. Oh, it is excellent to have a giant's strength, but it is tyrannous to use it like a giant. That's well said. Could great men thunder as Jove himself does? Jove would never be quiet. For every pelting petty officer would use his heaven for thunder. Nothing but thunder. Merciful heaven, thou rather with thy sharp and sulfurous bolt splits the unwedgeable and gnarled oak than the soft myrtle. But man, proud man, dressed in a little brief authority, most ignorant of what he's most assured, his glassy essence, like an angry ape, plays such fantastic tricks before high heaven as makes the angels weep, who with our spleens would all themselves laugh mortal. Oh, to him, to him, wench. He will relent. He's coming. I perceived. Pray heaven she win him. We cannot weigh our brother with ourselves. Great men may jest with saints, tis wit in them, but in the last foul profanation. Thou art in the right, girl, more of that. That in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldier is flat blasphemy. Art advised of that? More aunt. Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it err like others, hath yet a the kind of medicine in itself that skims the vice or the top. Go to your bosom. Knock there. And ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks, and tis such sense that my sense breeds with it. Fare you well. G gentle, my lord, turn back. I will bethink me, come again tomorrow. Hark, how I'll, I'll bribe you. Good, my lord, turn back. 
How? Bribe me? Die with such gifts that heaven shall share with you. You had marred all else. Not with the fond sickles of the test of gold or, or stones whose rate are either rich or poor as fancy values them, but with true prayers that shall be up at heaven and enter there ere sunrise prayers from preserved souls, from fasting maids whose minds are dedicate to nothing temporal. Well, come to me tomorrow. Go to, tis well, away. Heaven keep your honor safe. Amen. For I am that way going to temptation where prayers cross. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? At any hour, at any time, for noon. Save your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. What's this? What's this? Is this her fault or mine? The tempter or the tempted? Who sins most, huh? Not she, nor doth she tempt, but it is I that, lying by the violet in the sun, do as the carrion does, not as the flower, corrupt, corrupt with virtuous season. Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than woman's likeness? Having waste ground enough, shall we desire to raise the sanctuary and pitch our evils there? Oh, fine. 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 What dost thou? Or what art thou, Angelo? Dost thou desire her foully for those things that make her good? Oh, let her brother live. Thieves for their robbery have authority when judges steal themselves. What, do I love her that I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What is it I dream on? Oh, oh, cunning enemy, that to catch a saint with saints does bait thy hook. Most dangerous is that temptation that doth goad us on to sin in loving virtue. Never could the strumpet with all her double vigor, art and nature, once stir my temper, but this virtuous maid subdues me quite. Ever till now, when men were fond, I smiled and wondered how. Yeah, beautiful. I love, Paul, guys, just working backwards, that you're letting the confusion in, that this speech is just a what the fuck speech. It's just, he just keeps saying what the fuck for, for, for 25 lines, right? And you can let that confusion in even more in a couple places. Um, <laughs> not she, nor does she tempt. Um, almost like discoveries. I love for you to think about having, I love the fies got, we're kind of like, what is this on me? You know, it's like, ah, uh, Right, which means the next line can still be in that small place. What are you? what the f wait? What am I? And now you've got a place to start building towards that that ending. And finally, make sure strumpet. You can push those opposite a little bit, meaning never like there's. I've never been into porn. I've never been like nothing is ever, but I'm having thoughts about this other woman and i don't even know if it's sexual right now i mean what i'm hearing is that you say what what is that i dream of? uh what do i love her that i desire to hear her speak again and feast eyes upon her uh, and feast upon her eyes thank you thank you feast upon her Which eyes is very different yeah. very different like i right? don't talk about looking at her boobs or her butt i talk about her eyes and her and eyes, to, right? And to hear her talk. Yeah, it's eyes and windows to the soul. Mm -hmm. The sound of her voice, right? And so, it, so go to that place where you you meet that person that you just are. In life, we have people we're attracted to that we can't explain why, and it has almost nothing to do with looks. It's just like 
why do I find you so entrancing? I just want to be around you. Yeah. Then we're going backwards to set this confusion up even more. Um, go to the, go to, go to page 69 or line one. Actually, I, I want to go back to just, I think there's a new beat here on why do you put these sayings upon me? Yeah, I did and not I want to that pitch. the way I really wanted to. Okay, what do you uh, what do you want to do with it? Um, that was way too casual. Okay, okay, yeah. You know what I find interesting about this the, the page and a half before? Because every time I, I like move my pages, I'm like, there's three pages left in this scene. She spends about a page and a half talking about um, petty officers, about people who basically about rent a cops, right? You're like, there's great people. They can do that. But lesser people cannot. She's giving Angelo absolutely no authority, no respect, no approval for who he is, which I think would send you I think it's something Angela wants is put that in one of the, one of your wants is to, right. I've, I, and it's in a sense, we see it all the way through the scene in the beginning. Look, I, I've already took, no, I made a decision. All right. Hey, hang out and watch this perfect law. I'm going to quote the law perfectly. Right. And, but there's no, this like real respect for almost two pages. So why do you put these things on me? Yeah. I think the operative word is me. Yeah. And the line that motivates that is that in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldiers flat past to me. Or great men may jest, but in the less foul profanation. Like she's saying you're nothing. And I think she's pushing on a truth you're afraid is real. Right? We all have imposter syndrome. We're all just so afraid. I think that's a nerve she touches. She doesn't even know she's doing it. Maybe she does. I don't know. You, that's you. But so here's what I find fascinating. She gets to this place of, wait, wait, wait. Does she see through my robes and my wig and whatever? And then Isabella, when you downshift because authority, though, and air like brothers have the kind of medicine in itself, it's okay to be gentle from here all the way to the end. You got something from him. You got a humbleness or a connection, right? Why are you talking to me? I think you see that as an opening and you can be sweet all the way through. Notice you go to your bosom. That's like my brother's. If it confess it, let it not sound upon your tongue against my brother's life. It's like prayers for him. Notice he doesn't give a rejoinder. He gets an aside. She speaks into such sense that my sense breathes with it. And he just goes, Bye. Please turn back. Right. I just think it's a gentle thing that begins to open him up. I'll bribe you. Gentle. Right. Beautiful maidens praying for you. Gentle. Heaven keep your honor safe. I don't think she ends the scene with spite. I think she ends the scene with like, I got through to you. And probably... I'm trying to think in life when I've wanted approval from someone, which is everyone, all the time. And here, I think when he says, he opens the door, even on it starts to open on why you put these words on me, but obviously it really opens on I will be think me come again tomorrow. And just the joy of I got through to you. The approval. So I'd like to try that before I run out of time. I'd like to try that run all the way from How about uh, wine 156? We cannot weigh our brother with ourself.
Let's just see how that plays out. We cannot weigh our brother with ourself. Great men may jest with saints, tis wit in them, but in the less foul profanation. Thou art in the right girl, more of that. That in the captain's but a choleric word, which in the soldier is flat blasphemy. Art advised to that? More aunt. Why do you put these sayings upon me? Because authority, though it err like others, hath yet a kind of medicine in itself that skins the vice or the top. Go to your bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as is his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks in such sense that my sense breathes with it. Fare you well. Gentle, my lord, turn back. I will bethink me, come again tomorrow. Hark, how I'll bribe you, gentle, my lord, turn back. How? Bribe me? Aye, with such gifts that heaven shall share with you. You had marred all else. <laughs> with the fond sickles of the tested gold, or, or stones whose, whose rate are rather rich or poor as fancy values them. But with true prayers, that shall be up at heaven and enter there ere sunrise prayers from preserved souls, from fasting Hold. maids. Hold, just go back to go to your bosom. That was so beautiful. The just that go to your bosom, knock there, right? You're not being a fan. You're just here's my one last thing. And Paul, I want to give you, I'm going to ask you to really take time when she speaks in tis such sense that my sense breed with it. Let that let the audience in on whoa, something new has happened here. And let that filter through the rest of this scene. Okay. And they just Something that she says gets in there. So go to your bosom from there, please. Do you think, Stefan, that's not a shared sure. line, right? Against my brother's life, she speaks in tis such sense. Do you think that's For right line? now, I want it not shared. Okay. I want it just a, oh my God. I just let, let that in. Go to your bosom, please. Go to your bosom. Knock there. And ask your heart what it doth know that's like my brother's fault. If it confess a natural guiltiness such as his, let it not sound a thought upon your tongue against my brother's life. She speaks, and to such sense that my sense reads with it. Fare you well. Until my lord turn back. I will bethink me. Come again tomorrow. Hark, how I'll bribe you. Gentle, good my lord, turn back. How? Bribe me? I, with such gifts that heaven shall share with you. You had marred all else. Not with fond sickles of the tested gold, or stones whose rate are either rich or poor as fancy values them, but with true prayers. That shall be up at heaven and enter there ere sunrise. <laughs> Prayers from preserved souls, from fasting maids whose minds are dedicated to nothing temporal. Well, come to me tomorrow. Go oh, too. Tis well away. Heaven keep your honor safe. Amen. For I am that way going to temptation where prayers cross. At what hour tomorrow shall I attend your lordship? At any time for noon. Save your honor. From thee, even from thy virtue. Oh, what's this? What's this? Is this her fault or mine? The tempter or the tempted? Who sins most, huh? Not she, nor doth she tempt, but it is I that, lying by the violet in the sun, do as the carrion does, not as the flower, corrupt with virtuous season. 
Can it be that modesty may more betray our sense than woman's lightness? Having waste ground enough, shall we desire to raise the sanctuary and pitch our evils there? Oh, fine. Oh, fine, fine. What dost thou, or what art thou, Angelo? Dost thou desire her foully for those things that make her good? Oh, let her brother live. Thieves for their robbery have authority when judges steal themselves. What, do I love her? That I desire to hear her speak again and feast upon her eyes? What is thy dream on? Oh, cunning enemy, that to catch a saint with saints does bait thy hook. Most dangerous is that temptation that doth goad us on to sin in loving virtue. Never could the strumpet, with all her double vigor, art and nature, once stir my temper. But this virtuous maid subdues me quite. Ever till now, when men were fond, I smiled and wondered how. There it is. So good. beautiful. I thought so too. <laughs> I, Paul, you had this. It. What is it? I dream on a cunning enemy. That it, what is it? it kind of, Oh, sorry. What do I love her that I desire her to speak again in peace upon her eyes? What is that I dream on? Was so dangerous for you, for Angelo, that then the, the back third of that speech was his ego coming back out. To catch a saint, you get a saint. and But it was so human. Mm. Seduce me quite. I love it when an actor can take one word and kind of just have it ring it's just little word quite but oh we don't use quite like that the way we should i thought that was beautiful um the fies uh were so lived in oh fi fi right that's just this takes guts it's a it, that's a, a master class paul and just you right letting letting those words and the images just mess with you and then you want to get them off you and i'm glad you you didn't ignore my note, but you didn't need it. Really, my note was you seriously, right? You were like, oh, like you made the fies the thing. And then the next line was just just run with it. That was gorgeous. I um, tried to take the note about building from no, there. It was a false note because of the line you did before. Seriously, never like like total BS. Um I tried and then to build uh, Nathan's from here. What does though? What's that? From what dost thou? I try to build from there, like a like I. Oh yeah, no, it was great. There. But the fives were so. Ugh, they, I just loved it. Um, I love all this, all this sweetness back here. And the only thing I would say, if we get to do it, again, maybe we don't, is um, go to your bosom, knock there. It could be even more gentle. It's almost like advice. Hey, here's what you should do: put gas in the car. Go to McDonald's and get a Snickers. Like it's just simple. So he has the room. Guys. Hi, Nathan. Hey there. No, that that, that was wonderful. Um, and I'm just thinking, I was like, you guys are all welcome to just, you know, continue to meet uh weekly and we'll work on the scene definitely. So, you know, just as, as much as you like. Um but uh, no, no, it was, it was there are many, many moments I could I could pick out from you know your work today that you know, there were there was the 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 tete a tete between Isabel and Angelo that, you know, I saw you you guys talked about how the construction of some of the text was either uh, syntactically complex or or things didn't flow in a certain way. But there were moments where you know um, Charlotte and Paul, you guys were so in it in terms of like uh, uh, attacking each other that things really flowed. Like it, it just it just kind of fell out of you that you didn't have to think about, well, what's, how do I say this? And how do you know, it just, that kind of happened organically, which was fun 
to see and see how that evolved. And um, what I, at least what I read into Paul with your, with your monologue at the end, that you were almost, you couldn't wait to talk to, I mean, I guess in the larger context, the audience of like, as soon as you get them out of the door, it's like, what is going on? Like, you know, there are, there are moments with, um, you know, Angela could be played different ways where like suddenly like he's left and like, wait a second, what's happening. And whereas I felt what I was watching was this guy, like you, you realized like a few minutes earlier, like something is happening and I need to talk to somebody about it. And just in this context, it's the audience. So I, 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 I may be projecting, but that was me as an audience member, what I uh, took away from that. And I really enjoyed that. Um, and, and again, there were moments uh, that, that I could talk about, um, but I, I do want to get to some, some no, questions. I think, and, I think and things you're like right. That. I think, I think when he's alone, he drops the shield. Yeah. He puts down the mask and faces himself. Yeah. I mean, and, and, himself and through the audience. Right. And, and there, you know, there are many characters that, that use the audience. And of course they use it, you know, for different reasons, you know, it serves a, a different purpose depending on the character and what they're, what they're doing with the audience and, and how they use it to confide in or, or, uh, you know, gloat or whatever it is. Um, but uh, no, no, this was this was great, and and I really, um, you know, for those that weren't present for for the weeks leading up to it, it's just it's always so wonderful to see how the work evolves, and you know, for those who might just be watching this, it, it might be easy to think like, wow, you know, these guys were, they, you know, they must have been doing this in week one, and it's not to take anything away from your your talent and your skill as a group, but it's just how much how much it can grow in in just a few weeks. And how many different levels you guys all find uh, in this, just given the time to really uh, investigate it. So it's, um, you know, uh, it's, it's it's such a joy. Um, I do wanted to uh, ask a couple of questions, and I'll, and I'll mention um, we had one audience member, Gideon, who uh, he was so sorry. He, he, I think he saw the first run. And he's like, he's like, oh, I have guests staying with me. I I have to go, but he, you know, he wanted to watch this. Um, he really enjoyed it, and he said it was great work. Um, he, he meant, uh, he threw in a couple comments that, um, he was saying, you know, suggesting that maybe Isabella is, uh, you know, going into the nunnery, trying to escape a city filled with corruption, you know, for example, like, you know, Lucio embodies that. Um, and, uh, I think you guys touched on the point of like, why, or touched on Gideon's point of what attracts Angelo to Isabella and, uh, Gideon was suggesting, you know, uh, she arouses him because he finds virtue seductive. I know you mentioned you guys were talking about that, and she's obviously uh, innocent and virtuous. So it's it's as you guys were discussing, it's not it's not that she's attractive, even if she is. It's it's that you know it's that virtue um, that Gideon was suggesting. So um, what I wanted to uh, I just wanted to ask a couple uh, a few questions here. Uh, Stefan, starting with you, what what drew you to this scene in particular? Of, I mean, um, I, I know it's a kind of a tall ask of like, uh, Stefan, and in uh, all of the plays that you could choose from, and in, in all of the world, uh, what would you, what scene would you like to work on? And you came back with this. Uh, so, so how did this how did this come to mind? I knew I so I directed this play once, right, with students, and I wanted to. I want to attack it again. I, I'm now old enough where I'm I'm getting to repeat just a little bit. And it's such a joy to finally go, wait a minute, I need to do that again. And and then I also knew these were great roles mm -hmm. that that just I had enough here to to work on for 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 four weekends. And yeah. There's great questions in here about how much do people know about themselves, and mm -hmm. um, it's it's a flirt scene. It's not a flirt scene. It's such a unique and bizarre scene. Even in a lot of Shakespeare's plays, you think about it in Much Ado. You know, Beatrice and Benedict don't know themselves, and then the community helps them know themselves. But this is a really terrifying scene for both of them, in a sense. And that's and, what I, and, I was thinking. Yeah. It's hard. And, 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 it, and, and in a lot of the plays where you have this tete-a-tete, -tete, the characters have some history, but these are two characters who've never met before. And, and 
have this connection in front of us to have, you know, it, it's it revealed right in front of us that, that of something going on. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is, it is a very exciting scene in that, in that regard. Um, I would love to hear from, from the actors. Um, and uh, I'll start with uh, uh, Rachel, um, you know, you're playing the provost and Lucio. And I think you um, exemplified that there are no small roles. I mean, I loved, you know, over the weeks, hearing you know your questions and, and the discussion about what's going on with these two characters and what's their point of view and where are they coming from um were there particular things that uh, surprised or challenged you about either of those parts or both of those parts uh you, what, what 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 did what, what was your experience um yeah honestly i think the biggest challenge for this scene in particular and then balancing these characters against one another is um, the challenge of doing this over Zoom, I'm usually like the start of a process is finding it in the body, which like weirdly as a voice actor, I've got this tiny box, but even then I'm like busting at the seams trying to find sure. the body is. And I have been appreciating throughout the weeks that we've worked on this scene, the number of times we've talked about the beats being, and then you turn around or, and the door probably closes and then you come back through the door, like the there's so many moments and there's actually a lot of comedy in the physical of this that just I'm dying to be in the same room with these wonderful people to like actually get to explore that. Um, but I think a lot of the notes from one, the podcast that you shared with us between sessions where the professor talked about oh, the Luz, yes, and Gideon who had had um, had some notes today. He was he, he was the one. Yeah. Oh, lovely. He kept me company on a very long drive. So <laughs> thank him for me. Um, but the way he talked about um, characters and being foils for one another got me thinking about, mm -hmm. oh, Provost and Lucio and getting to play that comparison. Um, and then uh, last session, um, uh, Stefan, you actually comparing Lucio to uh, John Ralphio from Parks and Rec just kind of unlocked some of that there, which was just so much fun. Just like such a fun character. So, no, it would be really, really lovely and rewarding to get to just put this on its actual feet in the same space together. Well, and and what I what I've observed from a lot of these workshops, and I think this is true with any production that can do the text work. I mean, I think. If you guys were to meet to put it on its feet, so much of the blocking I think would be um, uh, almost there because you've already you you know like you already have these instincts based on what's going on with the characters. You've already investigated so much time that I don't think it would be like, well, you know, do you move over there or maybe you? Move? You know, it's like no, I think you've you've already kind of laid the groundwork that I think the blocking would actually come very quickly. Uh, because you've you've all investigated what's what's going on underneath, um, but yes, it would it, it, it is. Angelo yeah, Paul, sits go ahead. in a chair the whole time, and then it's and then it's just uh, what he what he does with the papers when he's shuffling them or uh, you know filing them. Um, and, and on uh, his false exit, he exits. He just wheels away. <laughs> well, um, well, all right. Well, Paul, since since you jumped in there, I, I'd love to hear. Um, what uh, what did you discover about uh, working on Angelo uh, over these weeks? So were there ideas you had coming into this uh, that were either confirmed or uh, supplanted with, with new things? Um, the only idea I had was that that um, it's very it's a confusing scene mm -hmm. and it can be looked at on the surface on face value of the words, but there's so much going on underneath and it was a little bit confusing. And that has now been supplanted with some clarity. It's, and, and I think the clarity is finding the humanity of him. Mm. That underneath the literal and figurative robe that he's wearing, there's a real guy in there and he's complex. Yeah. And he's flawed and he is virtuous in most respects, but um, he's put in a difficult situation and he has weaknesses. And I really appreciate Stefan urging us to really touch, 
connect to the humanity under the under the work. Well, and and I think you know there are often cases of the, the people that are uh, the most controlling or the most domineering are often the most insecure. Uh, that there's yeah. that there's something going on underneath that they have not yeah. resolved, and so they're acting out or projecting in, in a certain way. So yeah, I mean it's um, not to psycho. I'm not going to psychoanalyze the character in this moment, but it's just something to kind of continue to unpack of like why is this? Why is he so hell bent on? On, on following all these rules, what is going on there? And and yeah, so it just leads to a lot of interesting and, discussion and questions that you guys have had. And the scene, the scene after this is even more complex. Yeah, what drives him to to right. come out and say, "You must give your body to me." It's very strange. Yeah, the, um, no, I know it's the the greatest instruction or summary of what an actor is that I've ever heard, and I totally stole it, and I say it in all my classes. The words are like boats on an ocean. And our job as actors is to find the ocean. And this process has been for me finding the ocean. Because I oh, understood cool. the words. Yeah. But Stefan has helped us to find what's going on under all those boats that are floating mm -hmm. on top of the ocean. Very cool. Um, well, Charlotte, uh, you know, I, I would love to hear, you know, as you had worked on measure for measure before playing other characters. Is that correct? Is my rem remembering that right? Yeah. I played uh, provost, uh, overdone elbow, Marianne, the other nun. You, you did a one, you did a one person production did, playing everybody. Right? I did yeah. everybody that wasn't the Duke, Angelo or uh, Isabella basically. And oh, Lucia. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> you know, you had some familiarity with the play. What was it like stepping into the shoes of uh, Isabella? I mean, it was it, the the gal who played her in the production I did was fantastic, and and such a just she melded that that innocent fire that I think that I was very much discovering tonight. And what I did discover is that you know, it, like it's something you said at the beginning that that you know, we like to explore people playing roles that they would normally wouldn't play. And I, you know, I do realize that age has very much a lot to do with who this person is. And I walk in it with my 40 plus year old brain and put that on it. And so that, that tonight sure. is a lot of peeling that away in a really mm -hmm. interesting experiment um, of, of that uh, petulance and that, that, what do you mean? You know what I mean? That that I would, I would as a 40 something year old would go, well, I've got to put it in a box and present yes. it in yeah. the way that I do. Yep. Um, so that's been really, really interesting. Um, and sort of tearing away my idea of like, well, nuns are very sedate <laughs> and staid and they say things. Um, so that, that's been, it's always interesting to, to physically inhabit a character uh that that you wouldn't normally play and it mm -hmm. um, suss out those motivations so I th that's that's been that's been really really exciting um and and to, yeah and to unpack all the little arguments and mm -hmm. when do the gloves come off and when do you put them back on and yeah yeah well yeah i mean i i think you know so many of us particularly as actors it's like we're trying to get back to that like childlike innocence and and just the sense of discovery and play because you know the world just kind of uh, instructs us that no we have to be very logical and and very polite and all this kind of stuff and and so yeah it was just an experiment to be able to let loose a little bit more um, uh, that's really really great to hear um, and uh, Miranda I would love to hear you know um, I I don't think it came up at the beginning but you know you've been diving deep into this play through uh your work at boston court uh you, you know with the with the uh are, are they branding it like a, it's not an adaptation but like a uh inspiration uh of measure for measure or, or the, the new play that's based on measure for measure mm -hmm. um i would love to hear from you um what uh what you discovered or, or learned or or were engaged by by diving even more deeply into this play i mean i, I know you have to kind of work and prepare the play as a whole for that production, but being able to spend more time with just this scene, what what were your takeaways? 
Oh, really, just just so much gratitude, friends, because it, as, as I think I said at the beginning, I love studying the plays as text, but they aren't complete until they're being performed. And this play in particular is so complicated. And this scene, I think, is, is so, um, there's so much going on. And I certainly knew that from having read it, having taught it many times, working on, on Jessica Kubzanski's very mecha um, play. It's called Measure Still for Measure. It's about a group of actors who are rehearsing a production of Measure for Measure, What Could Go Wrong, um, and and just really, really being able to focus in for, for these weeks with, with the four of you on this particular scene, which uh, I, I really I really think is pivotal for the characters, for the plot, for, for what Shakespeare is trying to do. And I still don't know what he's trying to do in this play, but um, but it's been very illuminating for me, and just just the joy of working on on these lines repeatedly, seeing how all of you work together, and um, just being able to really really get in the weeds, you know, um, and really uh, really focus in. It's a it's a dramaturg's dream. And this is this has been a dramaturg's dream. So thank you. Well, excellent, and and I, I I'm so grateful that. The, that this is a space that you know has the time for a dramaturg to be as involved as they as they can be. I mean, most. I mean, that's sadly one of the first positions that uh, you know is not necessarily cut, but just not even included in a lot of productions. You know, we're like, well, we have to have costumes, and we've got to have sets, and we've got to have lights. But do we need to understand what we're saying? Eh, yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you know. Um, so no, I'm 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 so grateful for you know the, the dramaturgs to do this kind of work and devote themselves to really understanding the the text and because it's just it just adds so much uh, because otherwise people are making guesses or best attempts and and to have somebody with your expertise I think is is really wonderful. So um, thank thank, thank you uh, to you know thank you to you and and thank you to everybody. Um, I, you know, we're just about at time and I don't want to be respectful of everybody's, uh, time here, but, uh, I, I just want to say again, thank you guys for some great, great work tonight and over the last few weeks. Well, it's been a true pleasure, y'all. I'm, I'm not used to rehearsing this way and I thought I'd try it, which is just text. Yeah. Just, we're not gonna, we're just gonna text the shit out of this and then work on character and everything. And you guys just went along so I'm, I'm incredibly grateful and should you ever be in dallas i don't know why you would ever be in dallas but if you come to dallas i will give you bourbon you know Go Mavs, right yeah you know stefan <laughs> your three actors are in philly i'm just saying they're there you know maybe maybe it's not dallas, about it, maybe actually yeah who, who doesn't love a theater festival right well, um, this was great. I will uh, I will kind of end the the public part of the evening uh, uh, here. Uh, if everybody, you know, if all the artists can just kind of stay put, um, those on the call, you can either uh, sign off now or I'll move you back in the waiting room. And I just want to thank everybody for uh, your attendance, for checking this out. Uh, I will be in touch via email so you can learn more about the Winter's Tale next month and, and how to get involved and, and be a part of that. We're excited to just keep this going as a monthly series as long as we can uh and i think personally the quality of the work speaks for itself hopefully uh, all of you saw that too and you want to keep coming back and and enjoying the process and uh, the journey so with that uh have a great night and thanks so much <laughs>